Anyway, I just have a couple of things to do here just to get this set up. So now, um, so before I begin, just a couple of things to say. The purpose of the presentation that I'm about to give is to walk you, the members, and those of you watching at home, w walk you through the complete ballot paper. It's important that before casting any vote, members understand the full potential implications of each. They do, to do this, they must understand how the draft ballot paper hangs together and how the sequencing will work. As Justice Afoy has said, the members received this draft ballot paper before Easter. As such, you the men members are, all, are already familiar with it. For those of you watching online, the ballot paper that I'm about to walk through is now available on the website and I would encourage you to read through it as I go through this presentation. I have to say that this is not, this presentation I'm about to give is not designed to be a precise explanation of the wording used or the legal issues underpinning each ballot. Justice Lafoy, as she has said, you'll be hearing from her throughout the weekend, she will be providing that detail later as required and if required. Instead, this presentation is aimed at aiding your understanding of the structure and how each draft ballot connects with the next. So, we'll begin. So, ballot one asks the members, draft ballot one, I should say, asks the members, do you think Article 40.3.3 should be retained in full or not retained in full? In this ballot, you have two options. Option one. Option one is, Article 40.3.3 should be retained in full. So that's the first option on this ballot paper that you're, that you're being presented with. In the event that this is where the majority of members cast their vote in, in other words, if the majority of members in having collated the votes decide that they wish to retain Article 40.3.3 in full, that there'd be no change, the voting process is complete. And, and, and the work for the, for the day completes. So when the judge announces the results of that at 12.05, if the results are that Article 40.3.3 is to be retained, that's where our work uh, will essentially conclude. Option two is that Article 40.3.3 should not be retained in full. In the event that the majority of the citizens decide this option, we will then proceed to ballot two. So. Moving on to ballot two. Ballot two asks the citizens, do you think article 40.3.3 should be repealed, i.e. deleted and not replaced, or replaced or amended? And once again, I well, the options that are presented here, the citizens have three voting options. There's option one, and option two, but also what appears here is prefer not to state an opinion. And in private session this morning, a citizen has already asked the question, why is prefer not to state an opinion provided uh, on this ballot paper as an option? And I suppose it's, 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 it's there for a very important reason. And that reason is that if in ballot one, uh, we've gotten to ballot two by virtue of the fact that a majority of the citizens have decided that they do not want to retain article 40.3.3, <coughs> Uh, in full. However, it is possible and likely that in that scenario some citizens would have opted for, for option one in that they did not want to see um, article 40.3.3 changed and therefore it's important that they have an opportunity on the ballot paper to continue to express a view and that they're not forced into selecting option one or two. So it's important that they have a place on the ballot paper in which to record their viewpoint. That is, of course, not to say that, that somebody who had voted that way on ballot one would not want to express an opinion, and that's not to say that they couldn't express an opinion in option one or option two, but it is there precisely so that they're not forced into that position. So the two options then presented on ballot two are option one, that article 40.3.3 should be repealed, i.e. deleted and not replaced. So if the majority of citizens select option one here, we then proceed to ballot 4A. So in other words, the majority of the citizens have decided that article 40.3.3 should be repealed. 
and in her introductory remarks um, to, to, ballot, to ballot two, Justice Lafoy will provide full context as to what that decision would mean and so on. But if, if they decide in a, a majority to vote for repeal, we, a further ballot is, is provided to ask some additional information of them about the recommendations that they would like to make to the Oireachtas about um, the, the, the termination of pregnancy in Ireland and um, uh, the right to life of the unborn. So um, just to run through the structure of this ballot paper, there are, um, as you'll see, eight reasons listed in columns on the left-hand side, uh, sorry, rows on the left-hand side, and then there are five separate columns um, provided. So I'll talk you through each of those in turn now. So in relation to the reasons, the first two, one and two, uh, one is the real and substantial physical risk to the life of the woman, the real and number two is the real and substantial risk to the life of the woman by suicide. So in other words, these are reasons that the citizens may decide to see um, termination of pregnancy permitted um, in, in, in Ireland. The reason why I highlight these two in particular, firstly, is that these are the two provisions currently provided for in the 2013 Act. On the remainder of the, the reasons listed in the ballot paper, uh, reasons three to eight, you'll see that there are, um, they are provided for individually. There's the serious risk to the physical health of the woman, serious risk to the mental health of the woman, pregnancy as a result of rape, the unborn child has a fetal abnormality that is likely to result in death before or shortly after birth. The unborn child has a significant fetal abnormality that is not likely to result in death before or shortly after birth or available on request, i.e. no restriction as to reasons. So there are eight, eight options um, or reasons provided. And in each case, the citizens have um, are, are able to select, um, uh, express their, their opinion in a number of different ways. So in each case, they can say, never for this reason. So in other words, um, th this, this, it gives the citizens an opportunity to say that in no circumstances do they want to see that particular um, reason provided for in legislation or, or through the law. Um, in, in, the, in respect of... <clears throat> Um, B1, B2 and B3, we have three options there which relate to gestational limits or no gestational limits. So B1 is up to 12 weeks gestation only, B2 is up to 22 weeks gestation only and B3 is with no restriction as to gestational age. And you'll note that the letters across the top, so A is a category on its own, so never for this reason, just to go back to that. The Bs then are collectively um, provided there on the ballot paper, so that, it, that gives you an indication that they are going to be, to be grouped. And again, the Chair will go through this in, 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 in some detail in the event that we arrive at this ballot, but um, I suppose the important thing to note here is that um, uh, option A, and you'll see across the top, option A, B1, B2 and B3 are all collectively referred to as recommendations. So, these, will, these four columns will be added up to present the uh, opinions expressed by the citizens as to uh, recommendations. So for the purposes of determining a majority, um, all of B1, B2 and B3 will be added together to provide the totality of citizens who have voted in favour of abortion in, or the termination of pregnancy in some circumstances with, with gestational limits or, or none. Um, and then moving on to C, again, it's prefer not to state an opinion. And again, for the same reasons as I outlined previously, that's important to, to include there. And I suppose not least to reflect the fact that there, there may be somebody who, for, for who has voted on ballot one that they didn't want change, but also uh, uh, somebody who did vote for change may actually just not want to state an opinion. So that's provided, that's provided for there. So going back to ballot two, um, so I've just talked you through what happens if the citizens select option one in ballot two. I'm now going to talk you through what happens if the citizens select option two in ballot two. And just to recall, option two in ballot two is that article 40.3.3 should be replaced or amended. So if the majority of citizens select this option, 
we then proceed to ballot three. So ballot three is, I ask the following question, how do you think article 40.3.3 should be changed? And option one here, again, just to be clear, there are three voting options provided for the citizen. Option one, which I'll describe in a moment, option two, which I'll also describe, and again, the prefer not to state an opinion reason is provided there for the same um, reasons that I've outlined earlier. So looking at option one, option one is that article 40.3.3 should be replaced with a constitutional provision that explicitly authorises the Oireachtas to legislate to address both termination of pregnancy and any rights of the unborn. So essentially what this means is that, that the citizens will vote that a, a, a new that Article 40.3.3 would be deleted, that a new constitutional provision would be put in which explicitly places the, the power, if I, if I can use that term, to, if fully in, in the hands of the Oireachtas. And the event, in the event that the majority selects that option, we will move to ballot 4B. So, moving to ballot 4B in that circumstance. And the table that I'm going to put up here uh, ballot four, ba draft ballot 4B looks exactly the same as ballot 4A but it's described differently because it is doing a slightly different thing because in ballot 3 if you have selected option 2 option 1 you have, <laughs> apologies, if you've selected option 1 you've explicitly said that you want the Oireachtas to have control and so therefore uh, and, and that the constitution would provide for that. And therefore, ballot 4B is then providing additional information to the Oireachtas about how you think they should exercise that control. So it does a slightly different thing uh, to ballot 4A. It looks the same, but it does a slightly different thing. So I don't propose to go through it in detail in the way that I did previously, except to say that it is the same text. The eight reasons that are listed in the rows on the left-hand side are the same. The columns across the top um, are again also the same and the, w the manner in which they'll be reported and, and Justice Lefoy will explain this in the event that we come to this ballot, she'll explain how the reporting and, and so on will, will, will take place but, but just to say that it does, it does look the same. So to go back then to ballot three. So what we've just talked through is in ballot three, if you'd pick option one, you move on to ballot 4C. If in ballot 3 you select option 2, let's look at what option 2 um, says. It says that article 40.3.3 should be replaced or amended with a new constitutional provision that directly addresses both the termination of pregnancy and any rights of the unborn. So in other words, you're taking, uh, you've, you've, des you've decided that you want to delete or amend article 40.3.3 to and to continue to have some level of constitutional, that the constitution continue to say something about um, termination of pregnancy and any rights of the unborn. So in the event that you select option two here on ballot three, we then move to ballot 4C. Now, ballot 4C has two parts. And again, part one looks the same as ballot 4A and 4B. It's the same thing, it's, it's, it's doing essentially the same thing that it did in ballot 4A, ballot 4B, in that you are, uh, again, it's giving the, the recommendations of the assembly as to the reasons, if any, for which the citizens, of the members of the citizens' assembly uh, consider that the termination of pregnancy should be made uh, lawful in Ireland. So again, I, I won't go through that in detail. I will, however, go through part two. So part two is included here because, just thinking back to how we got here, so ballot three, we've opted for option two, and in option two, you've, if you select this, the majority has decided that they still want the constitution to have some level of, of say uh, in, 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 these, uh, in relation to these matters. So what this ballot attempts to do is to capture which aspects you want to see 
uh, regulated by the constitution and, and which elements you're, you're satisfied should, should just be in, in legislation. So again, the, f the format and the structure of this part of the ballot looks a lot like uh, 4A, 4B and 4C in that, um, and the first part of 4C in that it has the same reasons listed on the left hand side, the same eight reasons. However, oh, apologies. However, um, it has three different columns here. And, and firstly, I'll refer to Roman numeral three, which is prefer not to state an opinion. And once again, that's provided here for the reasons that I outlined previously. Roman numeral one is that the citizens would be deciding that each of these reasons would be primarily impl implemented primarily by a provision in the constitution with the Oireachtas passing legislation to fill in the details. In other words, that the constitution would specifically deal with the reasons as lift, listed on the left hand side. Option Roman numeral two is that uh, the reasons would be dealt with um, by legislation only. So in other words, this ballot allows you to express, you've said in the event that the citizens arrive at this ballot, you've said that you want the constitution to have some control. And this is essentially allowing you to express where you want the constitution to have that control. That's sort of a very layman's overview of, of, how that, of how that hangs together uh, in that particular part of the ballot. So as I say, Justice Lefoy will bring us through each of the ballots, beginning now with, with ballot one, providing a detailed explanation as to the wording, what each means and so on. But it was just very important for you to be able to see sequentially how each of those ballots hang together. That is, of course, visible from the, the markers on the ballot paper. We have instructions, you know, if the majority votes this way, where you go. So I think it should be fairly clear, but it's just useful, I think, to see it all hang together there. So you can begin to see how your, how your vote um, uh, might take shape, depending on what the outcome of, of ballot one is. So I hope you found that useful. Um, it's, uh, it, it's available online. This presentation is available online for anybody at home who's interested in, in reading through it again. Um, and just to say thank you for your attention.